Welcome to Snowpro Group. Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to see a real-time scenario where we are migrating the data from on-prem uh, database to the Snowflake uh, data cloud. And in this process, I am going to show you one stored procedure where I'll use to move the data from um, on-prem uh, from the staging tables to the main table uh, at the Snowflake site. So first, let's go through the scenario um, at the high level and see where the stored procedure come into the picture. So in this um, picture, if you see that there is an on-prem database and then I'm migrating the data to the Snowflake site. So basically that can be done in two ways, either um, creating a file from the on-prem table and uh, uh, keeping that at the, uh, the cloud storage and then from there either by using the snow pipe or copy into command you can move the data to um, uh, uh, the stage table at the snowflake site and from there to the main table or you can create a, a chunk of files from the table uh, from the on-prem and those will be directly loaded into the internal stage of the snowflake and from there you can load the data to the stage table and from uh, stage table by using the stored procedure you can load into the main uh, table so the stored procedure is will play a very key role here which will have the uh, logic transformation logic um, case conversions uh, data type conversions and making sure the size um, of the each column that will fit into the main table as well so when we are moving the data from internal stage or external stage into the stage table. So we will not consider about the data quality or the uh, stage table uh, de defined in such a way that it will accept all the strings at the max uh, maximum size. So uh, we will not worry about uh, what is the actual data length and uh, quality of the data and uh, those kind of things when we are loading the data in, in, into the stage table and the main reason is so when we are moving the data from file to stage table if any exception or error occurs handling them is little difficult because it is file to table uh, loading uh, so we don't have uh, a very well uh, way of uh, handling the things at that point of time so that's the reason what we'll do is first we'll bring the raw data to the stage tables and then from stage to main table uh, loading uh, we will make sure to check each and everything um, uh, during the stored procedure we'll make sure uh, that the data is proper and it is matching the size of the main table and uh, the case conversions the data type uh, conversions and everything will be taken care at the stored procedure level um, so that's the reason the stored procedure uh, makes uh, you know uh, very uh, key role in this process so we are going to discuss about uh, only the stored procedure as part of this uh, video i will not talk up talk about any other steps that i showed in this uh, uh, flow so uh, for for example like creation of files uh, splitting the files into multiple chains loading the data into uh, stage table and those kind those uh, steps I will not be discussed as part of this video. Uh, maybe in other videos, I'll concentrate on those things and try to explain how entire steps works and each and every step we can discuss. Uh, but today, let's concentrate only on the stored procedure. So let's discuss about the stored procedure uh, and what are we expecting uh, as part of this stored procedure? What is our requirement or what uh, things that this stored procedure needs to be taken care of when it is moving the data from uh, staging to main table? So, so these are the requirements that I wanted to achieve through that stored procedure. So first thing is this stored procedure should take two arguments. One is the source table 
uh, and another one is the target table. So source table is the stage table where the raw data is available. And the target table is the place where I need to move the data after uh, doing all the uh, transformation logic and everything. Um, so it should take source table name and target table name. And uh, when we execute the stored procedure, it should load the data from stage table to the main table. Second uh, requirement is uh, should check the source availability and target table availability. What that means is uh, it itself should check whether the stage table is really there or not. Uh, and then uh, the target table is there or not uh, in the main schema, right? So if source itself is not there, then it should log the uh, error in the log table and also should let us know that the whatever the source table that we have given is not available in the database. Uh, same thing should happen to the target table also. So third requirement is when it is moving the data from stage table to the main table, so it should go with the bulk insert. Okay, so um, it shouldn't be like record after record. So first it should start to do the bulk insert into the table so that in general, right, the bulk insert uh, is faster uh, than uh, looping individual records. But uh, bulk insert in general, it, it, if, uh, it fails if any one or two records uh, are having the bad data, which is not satisfying the, um, and the insertion criteria. Uh, what it means is suppose uh, you have a column with the worker data type uh, in the main table where the data uh, size is mentioned as 20 characters. But in the stage table, you have the data more than 20 characters. Uh, that is there only for one or two records and entire uh, millions of records, for example. That time bulk insert obviously will fail uh, because it's tried to insert all the records at a time, right? So if bulk insert fails, then only it should loop the records one after another, okay? So otherwise it tried to load the records um, through the bulk process, okay? So that's the another requirement. And next, uh, so when it is looping record by record, if any record is having bad data, which is quite obvious uh, sometimes, um, so that time what it needs to be done is like those records, it needs to skip and insert all the good records into the main table and those uh, bad records information should be captured into the log table. And uh, also uh, the stored procedure should uh, handle all the exceptions and errors during this process. So these are the requirements that we have um, um, uh, for this procedure. As a side note, I wanted to let you know that this Snowflake scripting uh, relatively new concept and uh, um, I'm also new to this process. So we'll try to achieve these things, but these are the good to have things uh, as part of the stored procedure. Uh, let's see whether we can able to achieve this or not. So let's do the data preparation for this, uh, uh, for the creation of the stored procedure. So I have a staging schema under that there is a table called employee. So if you see, uh, there are 17 rows are available in this uh, employee table. Uh, and, uh, and if you see the definition of the table, so it's uh, having the employee information. Uh, important thing that needs to be observed is if you see the data type and the size of these uh, string uh, columns, those are the maximum size that we have at the uh, stage uh, table. Okay, so this is because to capture whatever is there in the file. Okay, so uh, here to avoid any errors or issues. So let's dump the data to the draw, to, to the stage table. Okay, so but that data I wanted to move to the main table. Uh, in the main schema also I have 
uh, table with the same name. So let's go to the main schema. And then there is another table. Um, let me refresh it once. Okay. So uh, in this, if you see, it has a proper data types here. Uh, so as for the client requirement, for example, right? So it's in the main table. So here, uh, worker 15 is there, okay? So I need to move the data from stage two, uh, this table. Uh, that's the one requirement uh, that I have, okay? So there is an another table in the stage. EMP, which has four rows. And uh, if you see the definition, okay, so I have a table where if you observe the E name is 20 characters here actually. Um, and uh, in general, it can be max size as well at this stage level. But when it comes to the main, For example, enum has only two characters. So this is for the demo purpose only. I made it to enum cannot be two in general. Um, but uh, so ultimately, what I'm trying to do is, if any uh, employee name more than two characters should throw an error, uh, and a bulk insert cannot be done for that, and it should go to the individual uh, runs, right? So that's the reason. So we have the tables already and we have the data in them as well. Okay, let me go and show you the data also at the stage level. In the, in, the, uh, in the main table, we don't have any data, right? Let me refresh it. Okay, so if you see, we have zero rows, uh, number of rows zero, number of rows zero at the main. But when it goes to sorry, staging, you have four records. Okay. Simply for the purpose, uh, for the demo purpose. And then in in employee table, we have 17 records. Okay, so we'll try to load this information into the main table. Finally, I have created a stored procedure. I could be able to achieve all the requirements that we have uh, jot down earlier. Um, in the next video, I'm going to explain in detail how I achieved it, but uh, as of now, I'll just show you by executing the different scenario. So here I am giving uh, the source which is not available. You can see that in the log also it captured as well as when we execute the procedure it displayed. Now, if I give the wrong target, which is not available in the main schema. You can see the message target table is not available. And in the log also, you can see that the target table not available. So now I'm going to give uh, the source and target which is available so I'm going to give the employee table here so employee table is available in both the schemas uh, staging and main you can see that in main count is zero as well so when I execute this one so it's successful and then check the logs and log is saying also it is successful and the timestamp available. And now 
let's go to the main table and then refresh it and query it and see how many records are there so you can see that 17 records came from staging to the main those are available now I'm giving employee so where uh, in employee we have four records two records are proper and two records are bad records so let's execute and see what will happen oh it's success let's see the log in the log you can see that bulk insert failed because two records are bad records right right and then you can see that it saying we'll write the individual inserts when it write the individual inserts it inserted record one and three and two and four got errored out and that information captured in the log and if you go and see in the um, main uh, table you can see that only two records are available and two records got errored out and that information already captured in the log uh, thanks for your time. Just go through the high-level flow and uh, the significance of the stored procedure. And in the next video, we will deep dive into the stored procedure and how I achieved it and uh, uh, what is the bulk insert and what is the individual uh, insert and everything we'll discuss. Please subscribe my channel for more videos and uh, let me know if any topic that uh, uh, you want me to look into and do the uh, video on it. Thank you so much.